All right, chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. Uh, this one's going to be a 74HC4067, and that part number might look familiar. We talked about a 4066. A 4066 is an analog switch. Well, if you can build an analog switch, what if you put a whole bunch of analog switches in one package and make it into a multiplexer? So what is a multiplexer? Well, a multiplexer is a switch that's 1 in, 16 out or 16 in, one out. You can, they're bi-directional, so you can use them either way. So you could hook one of these up to an A to D and then program it to select which one of the 16 channels you want to measure that, that voltage of. And so you can turn your one input A to D into a 16 channel A to D. Um, or you could have maybe robotics where you have 16 different sensors and you can go around in a round robin situation and measure each of the 16 analog channels, um, something like that. So uh, these are normal HC parts, so they're zero to six volts. Um, some data sheets of some more modern parts, um, I, I don't remember which manufacturer it was, allow you to operate them up to 10 volts. Um, so uh, this one that I have right now is marked as a Texas instrument part. Uh, I have some questions whether it's a real Texas instrument part or some, some Chinese clone, but it doesn't really matter. We'll treat it as a Texas instrument since that's what its marking is, and it is 0 to 6 volts. So we'll, we're just going to operate it at 5 volts like we normally would. And um, you can get this in the HT, HCT version also, which is TTL level inputs and stuff. Uh, so the pinout is basically there is power ground one input, 16 outputs, or other way around. There's four lines that it's at the, a binary select. So f you set a binary code in these four bits to tell you which one of the 16 channels you want to talk to, 0 to 15. And uh, then there's an enable pin, OK? And so the only thing that is of interest for this video would be um, what type of analog signals can you send through it? Can you send through plus or minus 12 volts, which is maybe what you want to do? Um, so let's take a look at that. Um, so I have uh, one of those parts. Um, I bought it pre-populated on a little board from, from, from China. And so it's just the part and it's on a PC board. So it just makes it easier to hook up, but there's, no f there's nothing else on the board except for that one chip. So it still is chip of the day. Um, so we're going to have an input and we're going to have an output. So we're going to uh, run our input with a uh, function generator and we'll look at the output with an oscilloscope. So uh, what we're going to do is take a look at the voltages that we're, that we're going to be using. So I have it set up to one volt per division. So this is ground one, two, three, four, five. We have a five volt VCC. I'm going to change the offset of my function generator and I'm going to lower it down lower and lower and lower and you can see that it starts squishing right there. Well, what happens is there's protection diodes and these diodes, once they're turned on, uh, they are in reverse polarity. So they will turn on around 0.7 volts and that's what's happening here. When you go below ground by 0.7 volts, it'll start to clip. But you can actually sneak out a little bit. Oops, I pushed the wrong button here. There we go. Um, you can actually cheat a little bit. You can go down, you know, say half a, half a volt below ground, and they still operate OK. What about on the high end? So again, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 5 volts up there. So here's 5 volts. And we're going to go above 5 volts. And oops. Was starting to squish again. And again, there's a protection diode to the VCC rail. So if you're 0.7 volts above VCC, you start to clip again. So the usable range of this thing really is whatever power you put into it, ground to 5 volts. To be safe, really operate this at ground to 5 volts. You can't sneak out half a volt either side. Um, let's lower the VCC voltage to 4 volts. Okay, so here's Here's four volts of VCC, and you can see we're clipping again. And that's because one, two, three, four, we've gone above four volts. And so if we keep it right here, the ground is still the same, and we're clipping faster up this way. Let's run it up to six volts. We'll put in six volts as VCC. 
I think you can see where this is going. All right, so here's six volts. And, and now we can go up much, much further, or we can just have a much, much, much bigger signal and try to kind of smish it in there so it doesn't clip. So, so there you go. You just need to keep, keep it within the VCC range and then everything works fine. Uh, we could put in a, uh, let's say we'll put in a ramp, ramp. Did I turn off the, uh, <laughs> I might've turned off the touch thing. Uh, oh, I'm not using this. <laughs> I'm not using that. I'm using, I'm using this thing down here. I'm using, uh, I'm using that one there. I forgot when I was playing with it earlier, I was, uh, I was using the oscilloscope one. All right. So let's change what it does. There's its ramp. There's its square wave. Yeah. So yeah, it's working. It's working great. It... Anyway, there you go. Quick little video. I think a lot of people know the 406, 4066 and the uh, 4067 gets neglected.